Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the fair kernel. Let's let dn of x be the Dirichlet kernel. Okay, and of course the Dirichlet kernel, we already know what this is. This is dn of x is therefore what? It's the sum over all frequencies who cannot exceed n in absolute value of e to the i jx. We have a, we have a formula for this too in a previous video. It's the sine of n plus 1 half x over the sine of x over 2, right? And I know that if I can involve a function with the Dirichlet kernel, I get the partial sum, the n Fourier partial sums, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to average the Dirichlet kernels. So define the fair kernel in the following way. It's kn of x. And what it is, it's going to be 1 over n plus 1, d0, the zeroth Dirichlet kernel, all the way down to dn of x. Now, some books will do an n over here and an n minus 1 over here. I prefer this to be a trigonometric polynomial of degree n, and so I need the dn over here. Okay, so I've just averaged the first n plus 1 Dirichlet kernels, right? Now, let's look at the modes of this fair kernel. Okay, so what are the FOIA modes of this thing over here? Well, what's going to happen over here? So, the fair kernel, so note, that what's going to happen over here? So kn of x. Well, let's see. Each of these Dirichlet kernels contains what? Contains the contains one when j is equal to zero. So I have one n plus one times. So I'm going to have a one. And then the first time I see an e to the i x, d is zero does not have an e to the i x or an e to the negative i x, but all the rest of them do. So n terms have an e to the i x or an e to the negative i x. So I'm going to have an n over n plus one and then e to the i x plus e to the minus i x, right? And then the next one, I'm going to have n minus 1 of the e to the 2 i x and the e to the minus 2 i x. All the way down to the very last one, this is the only term over this dn is the only term that has an e to the i n x and e to the i n negative n x. So I have a 1 over n plus 1 and then an e to the i n x plus e to the minus i n x. And so I can summarize this in the following way. So what's happening over here is we've seen that we're, we're, these modes, these FOIA modes, are decreasing along a triangle. So what the spectrum of this thing looks like, so if I plot the spectrum, this is dn hat, uh, and that's like the k-axis over here of k. Well, the zero coefficient over here is going to be a 1, and then I have a, this point over here is going to be correspond to 1 or negative 1. Then those modes over there are a little bit less. Those modes correspond to a height of what? An n over n plus 1, symmetric over here. And then finally, all the way down to n, you get a 1 over n. So these have a triangular sort of a shape like this. So the spectrum has this triangular shape. So in other words, unlike the ordinary partial Fourier series, in the n plus 1, you get 0, and, n minus, and negative n minus 1, you get 0 as well. So you have a triangular spectrum over here. And so what's going to happen is we can write this kn now in the following way, kn of x is going to be the sum over j less than or equal to uh, n, 1 minus absolute value j over n plus 1 e to the i j x. That's our formula for our fair kernel. And the beautiful thing about this, and we're going to prove this result now, is that this is actually equal to, it has the following form. Here's our proposition. This is 1 over n plus 1, and then sine squared of n plus 1 over 2x over sine squared of just x over 2, x over 2. And the key feature to note here is that we're going to use a trigonometric identity, namely, we know the sine squared of x over 2 by the double angle formula, or power reduction formula, is going to be what? Well, it's going to be 1 half, 1 minus the cosine of x. So what this is, is this is going to be a 1 half, then a minus 1 quarter e to the i x, minus 1 quarter e to the minus i x. Okay, so that's the result we're going to use. We're going to use that trigonometric identity over here. And so what I'm going to do now is to prove this formula over here. So this is to be proven. This is, a prop this is our proposition that the fair kernel has this representation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of all the Fourier modes and see what happens with the Fourier modes. So now consider this. So let's consider, consider kn of x, this formula over here, times what? Times the sine of x squared over 2, right? So times the sine squared of x over 2, which is kn of x times 1 half minus 1 quarter 
e to the i x minus one quarter e to the minus i x, okay? So if we consider this expression, what's gonna happen? Now let's look at the modes over here. So I'm gonna write down the Fourier modes, okay? So here are the Fourier modes. Coefficients. Okay. So let's write them out over here. And this is the easiest way to sort of write down our information. So we have negative n minus 1. We have negative n. We have negative n plus 1. All the way down to negative 1, 0, 1. Let's say 2. All the way down to n minus 1. And then what? And then an n. And then an n plus 1. Okay. All right, so what, the first thing we're doing over here is we're multiplying these coefficients, these one-half coefficients, let's put them over here. So I have the, I'm going to multiply these numbers by one-half, okay? And so what's going to happen? So I just have the ordinary, um, the ordinary fair coefficients, which go down triangular. So at negative n, you have a 1 over n coefficient. At, then you have a, at this one over here, you have a 2 over n, all the way down to this number, which is n over n plus 1 mode. A mode of 1 over here, so of course those are the coefficients, right? And then an n over n plus 1, n plus 1, then an n minus 1 over n plus 1, all the way down to what? All the way down to just a 1 over n plus 1. Those are n plus 1s, actually, n plus 1, n plus 1, of course, right? n plus 1, and then 0, and there's 0 over here, and negative n plus 1. Now, what happens when I hit this negative 1 quarter e to the ix? Negative 1 quarter e to the ix is going to do what? That's going to shift all these coefficients over, right? So I'm just going to look, and I, remember that we're multiplying all of these numbers over here by one half, right? So all those numbers that I've just written down, the modes are going to be multiplied by one half. I'm going to multiply the next modes by one quarter, but I'm going to shift everything over by e to the ix. So what's going to happen is everything's going to shift over. So I have a 1 over n plus 1. Then this n plus 1 is going to shift over to the 1. So I'm going to have an n minus 1 over here over n plus 1. And then the n is going to shift over here to the n over n plus 1. And then a 1 shifts over here, all the way down this n over n plus 1 shifts over here. Great. And then there's a 0 over here. That's the kicker, right? And we do the same thing with e negative 1 quarter e to the minus ix, but that's going to shift everything backwards over here. So this, n mo this guy is going to be a 0 over here. This is going to be a 1 over n plus 1. Great. And then this is going to be a what? This is going to be a 2 over n plus 1, etc. The 1 is going to shift down over here. 1 is going to shift over there. And then the one's going to, uh, then we're going to have a one shifts over there. Then the zero is going to shift to an n over n plus one again, n over n plus one, all the way down to the n is going to give me a zero now. And then what? And then we're going to have a, um, a zero over here as well. And then over at the n minus one, you have a one over n plus one. So we have all those modes over here. Now, what's gonna, what the neat thing that's going to happen is observe what's going to happen if we do a one half, if we look at anything of this form. If I do one half of this number and then negative one quarter of this number, they will cancel out. So those modes are going to cancel out when I do the negative, when I do the one half and the negative one quarter. Similarly, over here, over here, you're going to have a what? Over here, you're going to have a three over n plus one. But if I do a one half of this, and then a one quarter of this, and a negative one, a negative one quarter of this, and a negative one quarter of this, I'm going to get a two. And so those modes are going to cancel out. And so in this method, what you can see is if you do this all the way down, everything except the what? Every mode except the n minus first mode over here, the n plus first mode over here, because there's nothing else to cancel over there, and then the zero mode over here. So the zero mode is just going to give me a one half. So if we calculate all the coefficients of this expression over here, we see the only Fourier coefficients that survive are going to be a what? Are going to be a 1 half. Now, this number over here, if you add all these things up, you're going to get a factor of what? Of 1 half, 1 half, 1 over n plus 1 from the 0 mode. That's the 0 mode over here. So the 0 mode gives me this. Then we're going to have a negative 1 quarter, 1 over n plus 1, e to the what? e to the minus n plus 1 x. And then a minus one quarter, one over n plus one e to the minus e to the positive n plus one x with an i, of course. There's an i here, right? And an i here, i there. And we exactly see now that what is this? Well, this expression over here is equal to one over n plus one. And then what's left over is just going to be one minus the cosine, one minus the cosine of n plus one x, n plus one x. And now by, so I, I've now proven that this expression over here is equal to this. Now I can use this trigonometric identity again and conclude the following. So we can, can now can conclude that the fair kernel, by looking at the coefficients over here, is going to be 1 over n plus 1. And then the sine 
squared of n plus 1 over 2x over the sine squared of x over 2. So by carefully analyzing the spectrum of the Fourier, co the Fourier coefficients of the sphere kernel and shifting them over one unit, shifting them back one unit, we have this telescopic sum that allows me to conclude this formula for the fair kernel. This is going to be very important in future videos because what this allows me to say is I can note that if I integrate the fair kernel over the unit circle and divide by 2 pi, I'm going to get 1 because the Dirichlet kernel integrates to 1 for every value, for every 0 up to n for the index. And therefore, the fair kernel integrates to 1 and it's non-negative. So I will prove in a further video that this is going to be an approximation to identity, which means that if I do convolution with these fair kernels, I'm going to get trigonometric polynomials which converge at any point of continuity to the function. And that's one of the basic ideas of Fourier analysis is that these sort of these smoothed out, these tempered, these tempered partial sums, these average partial sums, will in fact converge uniformly to the function if the function's continuous, whereas the ordinary Fourier coefficient, the ordinary partial sums may not. Thank you very much.